So have you guys seen what's been happening with Joe Budden and new Rory and Moore? So it's, it's kind of exploded over the last couple of days. So essentially, to give you a quick background, uh, the Joe Budden podcast, two of the co-hosts basically left the show because of a dispute and an argument essentially over the money. Um, it's just always like that. And it's always about money or girls. So two of the co-hosts asked for accounting. They asked for more information about the podcast and how much money it was making, about how much actually the deals were worth and whatever. And the main guy, Joe Budden, who's basically the boss, I guess, in some regards, basically said, no, I won't show you anything. It's my show. You're my employees, which then led to an argument. And they all kind of left and went on their separate ways. So since then, there's always been a kind of passive aggressive beef been going on through innuendos and little you know bullets and bars here and there and recently on the new rory and moore show sci Hai, the rapper who's also associated with kanye um loosely and you know writes for him and shit he, he was on there as a guest and he said towards the end that he wants to battle joe budden right as a rapper and then rory or sorry moore took the opportunity to basically kick and throw a little sub um towards joe it wasn't really a sub it was basically an insult a bit of a joke but let's play the clip so you can hear what i mean oh boy mm -hmm. he's super headstrong but if you keep pushing forward you know what i'm saying you make your own path you do your own thing and homes he all at right, home you know what it is with me and you bro mm -hmm. you know any day you feel like you can rap better than me you know what i mean that you've been telling everybody i put my offer on the table you rich enough to accept it but you ain't accepted it yeah, he's stolen enough. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know what time it is. He can, he's stolen he, enough. He got it. He can, he can pay you with yeah, my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, our money. Exactly. it's our money. Yeah, exactly. So much so love. I was dealing with. Old so that's pretty funny, right? It's a little funny joke. He can pay you. He can pay you with our money. Uh, you get it, right? Little little barb there, just to kind of throw out there. And I guess for some reason, Joe Budden did not like that in the slightest. He went on his podcast and basically tore into more. And weirdly enough, tore into him, but then took the episode down for some reason. I don't know why. So it was kind of like a response, but then he deleted it. So it seemed a bit pussy. But let's play Joe Biden's response to what Mal said. Stop, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No. Your last shit was trash. Fucking uh, No Dope on Sundays was great. But that's one great project over however long your fucking career is. I don't want to spend time on nobody that has used their brain power for all of their life to help somebody else great and not be themselves. You got to use your greatness for you to be great for me to look at you. Which leads me to my very next statement. <laughs> Maul. Not only did I not steal from you, you have never had anything worth me stealing from you. That's a weird line, isn't it? That's basically admitting that you steal. You have nothing worth me stealing from you. It means I steal things from people when they have things worth stealing. <laughs> no matter how many new beginnings you start, and no matter how many of these new people you get around, some of us know you. That would be me. So please stop spreading these lies. You've never had anything for me to steal from. That's not the nature of this relationship. This is some sick role reversal shit going on. And I'm not mad at nobody else calling me a thief. But you can't call me no fucking thief. No, I will not have it. You've never pulled your own weight. Oof. The first never meant nothing to you. It's Oof. never been like responsibilities. You never got up and carried your own shit. It's always been another nigga around to help you do it. Oof. And you don't speak to them niggas no more neither. So Oof. this is not Joe specific. Stop putting smut on my name. I'm going to start showing up for myself because that's my problem with the fucking internet. Y'all don't know none about none of these niggas. All of them. The whole industry. And niggas get a mic with no fucking resume and just get to talking and talking and talking. <sighs> it's not what you do, though. But anyway, that's Joe's response. Clearly wasn't happy about what Maul said and essentially insinuated that he's a rich kid. Sit with, you know, been silver spooned. Uh, the fact that he comes from a hip hop dynasty means that he never had to work for a dime in his life. Blah, 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 blah. So I guess in that response... Moore got him on his podcast, New Rory and Moore, and decided to go straight up ether 
on Joe and really give it to him in a way that I've never seen from Maud because he's usually quite chill. Come on, don't do no, that. No, I don't want to keep going back and forth. Uh, seeing things being said and, you know, it's more lies being spewed. Uh, obviously, you know, more emotions are coming out. I'm starting to see how people really feel and felt about me. Um, you know, and it's it's funny because, you know, before any business is in play, before any money is in play, like, people never disrespected me. And, you know, I've been disrespected by who I thought was friends, um, some people who I even considered family, uh, all as a result of just having a a better situation financially in life, more money coming into play, more money being on the table. And um, I'm not going to play the back and forth thing, right? I'm not going to play that. But as Rory and I have said before, there comes a time where you got to stop letting these narratives uh, be pushed and be spread. And the truth is the truth. The truth will always remain the truth. And, you know, I just, I'm still at where I was a year and a half ago. Just show the accounting. I'll shut the fuck up forever. I'll apologize on my platform for calling you a thief. I'll apologize on my platform for calling you a liar. Show the accounting. And in fact, I'm going to go a step beyond. Show the taxes paid out. Because I know the games you can play when it comes to accounting. You can't play those games when it comes to taxes. I would love to see that, but I'm pretty sure it's never happening. If Joe was willing to fire these guys because they dared to ask for the accounting, I don't think however many years has passed, however many different hosts has passed and different interpretations, different kind of reimagining of the shows and whatever it may be called, the narratives getting twisted. I don't see him now deciding, you know what, enough's enough, too much smart my name, I'm going to put the accounting out there. He's never going to do that because that would essentially take away whatever point he's kind of holding on to. But it's pretty interesting how he moles very measured in his response, very chilled, very laid back. And from Joe's side of things, you just get a lot of venom, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of, you know, his volume in his voice is very high, which is a classic Joe thing, but he sounds way more frustrated and angry than Maul does. And he's the one kind of being accused of something that he says he didn't do. So you should be kind of calm, which makes me believe that maybe there's some truth in what Maul's saying. But I think the core of it, the reason why Joe sounds so hurt is because he's hurt because he's lost a friend. Because the things that he said about Ma and the things that Ma's going to now say about Joe, they're not things that you can say sorry for and just become friends again. You maybe can become acquaintances, you can maybe be cordial and shit, but you will never be go, you will never go back to being friends like you were prior with the stuff that these guys are saying to each other. So you essentially know in real time you are losing a friend, which can be really hurt, which can be really hurtful, which is what I think you're getting from Joe. So maybe that's part of the reason why he's shouting and screaming so much. But not because he's guilty, but because he's legitimately lost a friend that he thought, you know, he was going to be his friend until his old age. But now they've kind of broken up over money, which is something they probably said they probably would never let get in between them. But now it happened. Show the taxes paid out. Let's do that. Let's do that on our... I'll, I'll go on his platform and let him reveal the accounting and the taxes. Let's do that. Let's not play this back and forth game. You know, I don't know nothing about the first of the month and, and dudes carried me my whole life and all these things. You know, dumb shit. That's just not true. And somebody from the outside looking in on relationships that I've had with, 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 with my homeboys of the past. You know what I'm saying? It's like, cut it out, bro. You spin in the narrative. You, you move in the goalpost. None of that is true. The reason me and those guys, some of those guys don't speak no more, you know nothing about. Oh, actually, you do, because I've told Rory and him in confidence what happened. And that's neither here nor there. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. But he knows. He knows what happened. And my thing is simply, you know, I'm not going to get into a back and forth with words. I'm not going. But you already are, to be honest. I hate people do this. I'm not into the internet shit. I'm not, but you're doing it. Let's just, just do it. You know what I mean? Shoot disrespect because. I know where that can go, and I'm not even trying to bring that energy into it. I'm keeping it on the facts. Like I told Rory before, the truth is on our side, right? Show the accounting. Show the taxes paid out while Rory and myself were there. Show the Spotify deal. Ooh. Show the contract. Let's go on. I'll, I, if Rory, I'm speaking for myself. I'll, I'm willing to go and sit down in front of him and let him do that. Be happy to. Show the contract. 
let's do that. You want to play this internet game in this podcast? Show the I'll I'll come to your new studio, sit down in front of you, put all the paperwork on the table for everybody to look at. Ed got to shoot it though. <laughs> oh, oh, we definitely gonna have we definitely gonna have our own camera there. Yeah, we gotta have our own camera there. Definitely got a dame at the Breakfast Club. Oh uh, yeah, because but but, <laughs> but, but but see, because again, like I said, man, you know, it's weird, man. And I'm talking to you know y'all as 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 as, as my crew, like you said. I'm the boss. I don't even like that. When you call me the boss early on, I, I snatched mean, you it. Are, bro. No, but I'm not your boss. You might, we're partners. We're I need you just as much as you need me, bro. That's a complete opposite of Joe Budden. At the end of that, when they broke up, that was one of the most hurtful things for me as a fan because they gave this illusion that it was sort of like, you know, a podcast version of Entourage, right? They were all kind of trying to figure out their way in the entertainment industry on their own none of their own endeavors maybe popped off the way that they would have liked them to pop off. But then together they became this massive cultural force to the point where like podcasts are not like that. You especially hip hop ones. People enjoyed myself included the fans of the Joe Budden podcast. And when it used to be called our name, this podcast later, we actually enjoyed it more when it was just them talking, no guest. When some of these other podcasts, out, especially the hip-hop based ones, they're very guest orientated. If they don't have a good or fun or interesting guest, no one gives a shit about the show because the hosts are boring. But this is one of the only shows where they had multiple people talking on a microphone, multiple personalities, and everyone was tuning in for them. And everyone had their own fan, their own whatever. You know what I mean? That's where, it, that's where the kind of the sparkle came from it. So when at the end of it, Joe was like, I'm the boss, right? So I can say that, right? No one's got a problem with that, right? Like kind of ranting at the room and kind of basically putting everybody on on blast and stuff and trying to reassert dominance. It broke my heart, man. I was like, oh, shit, man. It's really over. I don't I don't carry that boss. Any, that's corny to me. That's That's dudes that never had no type of you know, status amongst their circle. Ooh. Don't ever call. I'm not your boss, bro. I'm your partner. We're business partners. We're building something. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? Like, that's how I look at y'all as partners. Like, I don't want, I'm not your boss, but you know, it's just dudes that run around with that energy. They want to be looked at as bosses. But when you're a boss, you nobody got to say it. They know. It's just you. It's just how you, the energy you exude, right. the confidence you walk with, the way you it's hold true. your shoulders. Like, you talking all of this and you know, I, Cool, fam. You could try to spin a narrative about Maul. Anybody that knows Maul, nobody has anything negative to say about me. They can't shit on me. I've never done nothing whacked anybody. I've never done no bad bins. Look at his history of business. Let's get the, let's get Amalgam Digital on the line. Let's talk. Is Amalgam Digital still around? Uh, I think they dissolved the company, but I'm sure... Uh, I forgot the gentleman's name that was, that was running it, but I'm talk, sure he's still doing stuff in the music business. Let's talk to Amalgam Digital and see how they feel about his business practices. Oh. Let's see if if they... How they feel about him. Because all you got to do is just look at the business practices, man. Like, it, Let me skip back to the bit that I really like, the bit where he talks about the money. That was awesome. It's Let's anything see. that anybody... That was really somebody that I looked at as a friend. Of. <laughs> I was like, all right, never mind. Yeah, just, I'm done trying to explain shit because it's the internet. At the end of the day. Was it here? Where is it? Where is it? This is one of my favorite like, parts. Okay. Fuck the corporations. Fuck the business. They've been still. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm willing to go on your platform. Be mm. using. And that pains them. Oh, there we go. The this, most... is the, this, this is the best bit. This, pains is the best bit. Them. this is the best bit here. This is the best bit. Big old <laughs> <head>. <laughs> It's just corny. It's just corny, man. It's just corny. So listen, man. I, let's put it to bed. I'm willing to go on your platform. That cute dog. Your new show that still has my blood, sweat, and tears in it. Mm -hmm. Because everything you, and I know that's what pains him. I know that's what pains him. Every time he pay for pussy, that's some of my money. (laughs) Every single time he pay for pussy, that's some of my money. Some of your pussy. Every vacation, (laughs) every every vacation he take a chick on, that's some of my money he be using. And that pains him. The most money he ever made in his life, he made sit next to me. That pains him. I know that pains him, but we had a beautiful thing. It worked. I, I thought so. It all built together. And I, I didn't think it was such a, a hard thing him. to say that we, the three of us built it together. It pains him. <laughs> I didn't know that was such a difficult All that Balenciaga idea. he's wearing, I'm paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> it pains him. It hurts. Every time he think he's fresh, he look in the mirror, I paid for oh, it. I can it's assure you, I did not buy these Lululemons with our corporate card. No, it was no, all no, my no. personal. It's okay. You're my guy. Man, swipe it. It's on all the, good. On the Lulus? Yeah, it's all good. The Lulus. It pains him. 
Every Half single these time. Is yours. Yeah. <laughs> every single time. You know what I'm saying? Every time you go to the strip club, you throw singles. Those is my faces on them mm. singles. It pains them. <laughs> it hurts. It's like Usher Bucks. Oh, it hurts. Usher bucks. It has Usher to bucks. hurt. It's funny. That, it yeah. hurts. Mm -hmm. But we had a beautiful thing. Yeah. What? Just, it was the greatest podcast oh, of all time. Oh, God. He, he, but, but, but again, it pains him because. You know, the notoriety and, and the cloud and the attention that he wanted as a solo artist. Mm -hmm. He attained that sitting next to two guys that he feels like has no resume. Who are these guys? Mm -hmm. They didn't put in the pain and the, the industry and go through the, the ringer like I did. So now that we got a, 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 a eight, what is it? Six, seven, eight figure, whatever it was. We, we don't even know. We, don't know. <laughs> we didn't see the contract. <laughs> it pains them. It hurts. Julian, you hear me? Oh, it hurts man. him. <laughs> and I can understand it because I know him. You know what I mean? Like, I know him. And I, it, it's like, you know, it's fine. But don't don't try to create a narrative about Maul. Like, I'm some ain't shit nigga. And I, nobody, anybody. I mean, you know, the fans that don't know me, yeah, I'm new to them. I'm, you know, I'm all Anyway, that's basically the end of it. What I want to say quickly here. Oh, what's Frank Lopez says? Zinger, do you know about the Joe Budden admitting to doing collided stuff with his dog? Of course I know about that, man. The thing he did with the pencil and shit, yeah, yeah, whatever, jerking up his, yeah, I'm not, not getting involved in that stuff. Yucky. What I want to say is that it's actually interesting because I think, oh, look at that. When I put my hands up, fucking look how light my hands are compared to my face. Jesus. <laughs> it's fucking interesting, right? That it's actually way more painful to break up with a friend than it is to break up with a partner, with a lover or something, right? I feel like when you lose a friend or when somebody says, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore or you lose touch or you have an argument or something where you stop talking, it's actually really painful. Like to the point where it probably hurts more than maybe losing a family member legitimately or losing an actual significant other. Especially for dudes who don't necessarily have many friends anyway to begin with, who maybe find it hard to make friends, especially the older you get. So to lose one, who you were kind of in the trenches with, one that you were sharing fucking, you know, um, hot noodles with, one that you were like sleeping on the set, on the couch with, you know, one that you were sharing fucking, uh, washing up powder with and shit. It's really, really, really hard to kind of take that. It kind of is. So I understand both of their positions because I think deep down under all of this, all of these insults and jokes from both sides, I think they do deep down still miss each other. I think they still miss each other a lot because they were really friends and now it's kind of gone and they know it's never going to come back again to the level that it was prior. It's never going to be the same ever again. And it really kind of pains both of them as to borrow a flipping mole statement. It pains both of them that it's never going to be the same again. And that's the unfortunate part of it. I know for myself, you know, one of the hardest things I had to do was people saying, Hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. That's horrendous, man. Um, especially when you think they're your actual friend, but it turns out, you know, maybe they weren't, maybe they don't really like you, the version of you as a person, maybe they're evolving to somebody else, whatever. It can really, really hurt. So, like, I understand what they're, what they're feeling and what they're kind of going through. And as a fan, man, it's really hurtful because as much as I love me, Rory and Moore, and I'm going to see the live podcast show, you can't deny that both shows have suffered because they're broken up because that original show was legitimately maybe one of the best podcasts ever legitimately that run that they had i was looking forward to every episode especially when i was going through you know a bad patch and you needed to just zone out and not really worry about the work that you were doing in private on the background it was incredible good entertainment good takes and shit it was awesome and then it kind of ended self-inflicted kind of thing so that kind of was a bit hard to take but you know what can you do in that regard 